Welcome back guys to part 6 of my tutorial series on the Mac Pro 4.1, 5.1, the so-called cheese grater Mac Pro. And maybe if you look in the navigation below, um, you can see what we already upgraded inside this Mac Pro. First we did the Bluetooth fix uh, for the Bluetooth laggy mouse issue. Then we created an installation medium and I showed you how to install macOS High Sierra on the 4.1 Mac Pro, which officially Apple doesn't support, but which I already did and tested and it works really, really fine just by doing the firmware update. Then in part three, I showed you how to put in a one terabyte uh, solid state disk drive with full SATA speed with this uh, other computer, Mercury Celsius adapter. Then we talked about graphics cards. And as you can see, then we did the memory upgrade. Uh, memory is already in. This is the old uh, two gigabyte modules, which I replaced against eight gigabyte modules, uh, server grade modules, which work really, really well. And by the way, it boosted my performance uh, in here really, really quite nicely. Really made a huge difference uh, to have the uh, six gigabyte replaced with 24 gigs. And maybe as you can see here now in uh, episode six, we're gonna tackle the processor. And yes, for this, I had to do some waiting uh, and buy a special tool. You will need like a special tool like that. And I'm gonna show this to you in a second. And um, the CPU uh, upgrade that I have here, I bought on eBay and I'm gonna take this out of the box for you guys in a second. But let me tell you, this is a six core CPU and in the Mac Pro right now it's a four core and also this has a faster clock speed. And the interesting part about the CPUs is also that depending on which CPU you use, uh, your iMac can support different types of memory. The CPU that's currently in my iMac, uh, I believe only supports 24 gigs of memory, but this CPU supports considerably, considerably more. And I'm gonna show this to you in a second. We're gonna head over to the Intel website and look in the specifications and the real difference is that the old CPU, I think uh, when it came onto the market was like worth $500 and the server grade, and it has the designation W and the server grade CPUs with the designation X. Uh, first of all, they are dual, uh, dual CPU capable. So if you have a Mac Pro with the dual processor board um, that supports it, but all these uh, more expensive X CPUs, besides supporting more memory, also had a much higher price when they hit the market. I think like the one that I have uh, in right now was 500 and this is, well this was, I believe like 1,500. So like these CPUs I think had triple the price. Um, I think we're just gonna get started right now here in a second. Um, I have prepared everything. You know where we are in the, in the time, in the progress line of the tutorials. Um, if you want to see another tutorial, just click on the on the links below and it will lead you to the corresponding tutorial. And now let's uh, change the camera position and I give you a close-up shot from above. I'm cleaning up the CPU and then I'm showing you how to install it and what to pay attention to. And then we're going to do a performance test. I already did the Geekbench uh, scoring and then we're going to compare the old Geekbench score with the new Geekbench score to see what performance gains we got by following all these steps uh, in improving our 2000, uh, I have the 4.1, so that's an early 2009 iMac. So it's nine years old, but I think it performs still really, really great because of the upgradability. So let's get started. So guys, before we actually start, obviously we need the CPU. And also, like I told you earlier, we need this uh, special tool to remove the heatsink. And maybe you want to have a little bit of microfiber cloth and then also what comes in handy is this arctic clean the thermal remover and the surface purifier now i bought the cpu on ebay and what i immediately noticed and i hope this shows up on here when i take this out of the box uh, by the way this is the intel xeon x 5675 3.06 gigahertz and there is a particular reason why I picked this one over the faster ones because I went on the Intel page and I saw this has a way low power draw than some of the other models. So the benefit is I will not only get six cores, uh, faster uh, clock speed, 
but also reduce power consumption, which I think is a good, good, good value. And if you pick the top of the line module, sorry, the top of the line processor, obviously it's gonna have a higher clock speed, but it's gonna cost twice as much and consume considerably more power. And I'm going, after I'm installing this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show this to you on the, on the Intel page. But what I wanted initially to say is like when I ordered this on eBay, obviously it's a used one, but you gotta be really careful, like because the guy who sent it to me, there is still some compound on the CPU. And obviously on the heat spreader, I, I don't really care much about it because I can just remove it. But obviously it's not so good if it's on the bottom side. So um, I'm always a little bit nervous getting like a used CPU uh, and putting it in because I'm really afraid of ruining my system. I saw some videos online, some people, they did the CPU replacement and in the process uh, potentially permanently damaged uh, their system and maybe uh, i think this was like two two dudes somewhere in a sound studio uh, upgrading to faster cpus so that the sound engineer could run like these crazy effects app, crazy effect apps and, and that was like a really cool tutorial so maybe i put the link below in the video uh, uh, below in the video so that you can watch this too because the guy explains how on I think this did pertain to the uh, dual processor Mac Pros that when screwing on back on the heatsink you could potentially uh, if you screw it on to tightly squeeze some pins if I'm not mistaken my the single processor Mac Pros are not affected by this uh, as I'm going to show to you in a second but yeah so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the thermal purifier and this microfiber towel, clean up the rest of the compound that's on the CPU and make it ready to install and then I'm gonna be right back. So guys, quick change of plan. I decided to use some isopropyl alcohol uh, instead of the Arctic uh, clean to clean up the surface. I mean to super clean the surface. And as you can see, it, uh, there's no thermal compound anywhere to see anymore it looks like brand spanking new and also here the heat spreader i cleaned this up as well and there's no uh, compound residue left so let's uh, install this into the mac pro and yeah obviously all we need for that is to quickly take the cover off that should be a familiar process by now and yeah guys if you're new to my channel and new to this tutorial series uh, like, I, I, like I said in the beginning, um, this is the memory upgrade I did previously. This is the graphics card update. And here we have the one terabyte solid state disk drive from Samsung that uh, has a SATA 3 speed. And so far I'm really loving the system, uh, especially because this graphics card only draws um, a max of 75 watts power. And the CPU that I'm currently having in there, the four core, draws i believe up to 130 so i tested this when i run the system under load it's consuming about 200 watts of power and yeah obviously upgrading the cpu to a more energy efficient one will drop that even further down all while giving me six cores instead of four and higher clock speed so it may not be the super fastest system and it may not be able to compete with the newest Mac uh, Pro, but still it's a great value. If you remember these memory modules, I got them for about 80 bucks and it's 24 gigs. If you look what you have to pay for 24 gigs in a brand new iMac, um, you probably know it's gonna cost way more than 80 bucks. So, but I digress, uh, let's pull out this board and then I'm gonna show you a shot from the top how I remove this heatsink. And yeah guys, before we can start removing this heatsink, obviously you need a, uh, I believe three millimeter hex uh, screwdriver. Do you call this screwdriver? And uh, just take this out real quick. And yeah, you have to make sure that's a long one. So if you're on the dual processor system, you gotta be careful um, because like I told you earlier, the dual processor system, the four point on the Mac Pro 4.1, uh, I think has deleted CPU, so you have just the CPU right there. Here I should be fine, I mean, there should be a bracket holder in there, but let's just remove this and then I'll show you how it looks like. So guys, that was fairly easy. I removed that uh, heatsink and yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, as you can see here, there's like a really a real mounting tray and that's really the good thing. That's something you wanna pay attention to, whether your uh, Mac Pro has like a 
CPU mounting uh, tray or how do you call this bracket. Carefully remove the old CPU. And yeah, this CPU is like way more energy hungry. Maybe I can give you a little bit of a close up shot. Put the heatsink to the side. Move this a little bit more in the center. Zoom in for you a little bit here so that you can see how, how a board like that looks uh, when you look look at it from the from a close-up shot. Uh, and basically from all I can tell, um, if I operate my Mac just normally, like if it's just idling, currently it's consuming about like 100 watt. And uh, I think if I install the new CPU, uh, that's gonna drop. And like I told you before, on the load, it consumes like about 200 watts. So I'm also gonna drop this because I think I wrote this down here somewhere, the, the new, processor consumes tops 90 watts and has six cores and the old one has only four cores and a lower clock speed and 130 so the, that should really make my system not only faster but way more energy efficient so let's take this out real quick and put in the new cpu and i'm going to show you a trick how to apply the thermal paste and by the way guys uh, i'm using this uh, mx4 thermal compound and I believe that this has a durability, a rated durability of about eight years. So you can imagine this is a nine year old Mac Pro. So the performance of the thermal paste may or may, or may not degrade over time. So it's really good maintenance to clean out a little bit of dust that's here under the, I, I think you call this uh, ICH. I always see this can also get pretty warm because if you look at the at the Intel block uh, sheet, the diagram, how the data flows, I think there's a lot of data flowing through here. But in any case, I digress. Let's just put in a new CPU. And yeah, guys, as you can see, I really prepped the surface really, really nicely. So maybe I'm gonna show this to you. It really looks so super clean, almost like a mirror. You can see like the reflections. But uh, yeah, guys, I digress. So um, the important part is uh, how you apply the thermal compound because I looked this up in the Apple technician's guide. Um, you have to remember that the processor unit below the heat spreader is, is shaped like this. So when you apply the thermal compound, maybe you also wanna apply it like in a line in this particular direction from here to here, not, uh, not sideways. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. So I hope this is uh, the correct amount. It's always a little bit tricky. You don't wanna to use too little, you don't wanna to use too much. Obviously you don't want it to be so much that it's like overflowing all over the place. Um, that's not good either. But I did it sort of like it was displayed in a, a technician's guide. I hope it's correct. So let's try this out. Put the cooler back on. So guys, success. I carefully put the heat sink back on while at the same time looking at the Apple technician's uh, manual for my Mac Pro. And basically what it recommended is using a crisscross pattern to do a few turns here, then here. So again, this would be one, two, three, four, five. And maybe start with only two turns. One, two, three, four, five and then do another four turns, one, two, three, four, five. And the wording that Apple uses in the technician manual is hand tight. So that to me means when you put this hex screw in and you carefully turn it, let's say with one finger, then at some point there is gonna be a resistance. And right now, you know, I cannot turn it anymore. So you, you will feel the resistance. So. Just make, make sure you use this crisscross pattern, one, two, three, four, five, and don't turn on one corner all the way down right away. Maybe just do, do it like two or three times so that you're gradually lowering it so that it's not like imbalanced. One side is lower and one is higher. Um, that way it's, it's go, go, gonna be very easy to put this back on. So next up, I'm just gonna slide the board back in and yeah, I mean, like I really love these uh, Mac Pros because like, just look at how it's designed. That's such a, such a futuristic state of the art quality industrial design. Um, I think I'm not really sure why Apple stopped producing Mac Pros like this. Actually, I'm a little bit sad about it. Um, why not make a new Mac Pro that <laughs> looks like this, but with the up-to-date hardware? That wouldn't be too bad. And yeah, essentially even this tray, it has these guide rails so you can just slide it in. How awesome is that for maintenance? You can access everything easily. The drive base, your components, 
and slide in the processor tray in the memory it's it's really ingenious design and you can really look at the details if you already have a mac pro or when you buy one if you don't have one yet and notice all these little details so they really tried really really hard to make this like a special machine so now that this is back on let's put the panel back on and i'm like guys i'm really nervous right now i really hope uh, everything works fine ah, i forgot someone recommended not to put the panel back on but to leave it open on your desk and then to see whether uh, the cpu light comes on so let's uh, let's do it that way i think that's better actually as you can imagine um, i'm super nervous i hope everything worked fine uh, in just a second i'm gonna push that on button and I really hope uh, that it works correctly. So let's check this out. And yeah, guys, as you can see, I'm really, really uh, nervous. Uh, so let's check it out. Moment of truth. And uh, I'm surprised it took a second long, a little bit longer than I'm used to. But as you can see, uh, there is no red check CPU light and the display came on just fine. So let's uh, maybe jump to the desktop and run a few speed tests. Uh, so guys, uh, in fact, I have uh, used uh, my upgraded Mac Pro uh, for quite some time. A funny thing happened, uh, despite the fact that I have the early 2009 Mac Pro, um, you can see it detected as a mid-2012 because I upgraded the CPU, which is kind of funny. So basically what I did, I uh, used it for a while. I run a total of the benchmark three times with different configurations. Uh, with the old CPU, with the new CPU, and the upgraded memory at the slower speed, 1066, I believe. And then with the PRAM reset, uh, it detected the full memory speed. So I'm just going to quickly show you the test that I saved in my Geekbench account. And as you can see, the performance in and of itself, when you buy like this $400, $500 Mac Pro used from eBay with the Xeon, Xeon w3520 cpu was about 8000 um after upgrading the cpu to the x5675 which is the server type cpu we are reaching almost 1400 or oh, excuse me 14000 so um all i can say is like i really feel the performance increase if i run apps if i export video and I think the most noticeable thing is really that this uh, Xeon X uh, series CPUs, they don't seem to get nearly as hot as the W series. Uh, so let's quickly go over the performance review. Um, that's the, basically the most that I could get out of the system. Uh, for me, that's perfectly fine. Some people may opt and get like the dual CPU system, which I think is personally is a little bit overkill. So maybe let's just quickly scroll down here. I mean, like you can you can look similar up similar tests uh, online on the Geekbench browser. So maybe that's not that interesting. Maybe more interesting uh, is to you to explain why the CPU is really faster despite that. Okay, this has four cores and this has six cores. And uh, guys, maybe you see already, I had to stop the recording for a moment and uh, do some digging. But what I found is a really, really good explanation. Uh, and I hope this shows when I compare these uh, both two CPUs and their characteristics side by side. I mean, the first thing that you can already notice is uh, Intel's website is a great tool. If you're planning any CPU upgrade, if you plan to buy, uh, purchase an old CPU, make sure you do a little bit of research uh, before you do so, um, you can see that this uh, old CPU has a lower uh, data transfer, lower clock speed and only four cores versus uh, six cores down here. And this is like immediately reflected in the price. Like the old CPU was considerably more affordable than the more expensive server kind of grade CPU. So basically the W designation uh, from what I understood is like more workstation and the X uh, designates it as a server product. Um, although it says here server on, on both. So for me, the W is more like a workstation. Now, when I looked at the performance uh, listing here, uh, one thing that I personally noticed uh, first was that the new CPU, despite having six cores, draws significantly less power. And a second thing that really uh, caught my attention was looking at the memory specifications. And uh, granted, I did this a little, little bit after the fact, 
because I just curiously, I wanted to understand why is this CPU making my system so much faster? And one uh, explanation is simply, if you look at the maximum memory bandwidth, I mean, I put in 24 gigs of memory, so there's quite a lot of uh, data when I edit video. So uh, increasing the memory bandwidth from 25.6 uh, to 32 was really significant. And basically the way that is done is that both these Intex CPUs, the W3520 and the X5675, they both have what I understand a built-in memory controller. And this more expensive CPU over here uh, can address ginormous amounts of memory. Uh, I'm probably never gonna put that much memory into my system. I think the max I can put in is 48 or 64. But uh, I said this earlier in my memory video, This uh, the CPU has basically, both CPUs have a three channel memory controller. The difference is that this more expensive one can also run the memory at a faster speed. And basically what that means, at least from my understanding and what I could research is that you get different data rates based on the uh, frequency, the megahertz frequency your memory runs at. So I uh, maybe I kind of quickly show you this in a calculation because here in the table, it's not as obvious. But yeah, looking at it here, uh, I've written this down at 100, at 1066, you basically get a data transfer rate of 8.5 gigs. That's my understanding. I mean, please correct me if I'm wrong. I, I don't know all the answers, but uh, from what I can see, it appears you get 3.8.5 gigs uh, times three, it gives you exactly the 25 gigabytes per second that we could see over here at the maximum memory bandwidth. So uh, yeah, and then obviously it's logical if you have a bigger, C uh, bigger CPU, a more powerful CPU like the X5675, then yes, surprise, surprise, uh, if you run the memory at the max speed, which is now faster than the old CPU, you get a bigger memory bandwidth. So each uh, DDR3 memory module can now deliver 10.6 gigabytes per second uh, multiplied by, whoops, by three, the number of channels, you get a higher data rate. So that I feel really contributes to the fact that when I use the system for video editing, it's just, it, it can just suck up all this data from the solid state disk drive, dump it into the memory and the CPU can access this really fast with uh, bigger data dense transfer rates and uh, that results in a really really super fluent system um, only thing that i noticed you really need to make sure that when you upgrade the cpu and when you upgrade the memory uh, that obviously if the previous cpu would would be able to address 24 gigs but the previous cpu from my understanding would not be able to uh, address the 48 gigabytes. So if you had 16 gigabyte sticks, you would have 48 in total. That you can only do with one of these more modern CPUs. And then to get the full speed, I also had to do the PRAM reset. Uh, because uh, once I, uh, the memory I put in first with the old CPU, then I upgraded the CPU, but the speed would still stay at the lower speed. So not uh, utilizing the full memory bandwidth that the CPU can carry and the modules can deliver. So, and I saw, actually I saw that in the forums, people say like, wow, I have the right CPU. I have the right memory. Why is the speed not at this 1,333 megahertz? Well, the answer is because you should do the PRAM reset and then it should work just fine. So um, guys, I really digress. Um, that should uh, sort of conclude my tutorial series of how to get the most out of your Mac Pro 4.1 and 5.1. And I think I have sufficiently answered the question whether it's worth to buy an old Mac Pro from 2009. As I have shown you, it's really possible to work with these machines in 2018 and beyond. And just a quick recap, maybe I can show this in the navigation here below. You just have watched part six. If that's the first video that you watched, you may also want to consider making sure you have looked at each of these individual uh, videos. I had uh, basically I had an introduction of the project. Then I showed you the Bluetooth fix. I showed you how to install Hyacera on the unsupported Mac Pro 4.1. I showed you how to do the firmware update. I showed you how to create like this installation medium that you have Hyacera on USB stick. You don't have to download it each and every time. 
uh, you do a system new installation. I also showed you how to use a one terabyte solid state disk drive uh, while getting the full speed out of it with this adapter. I showed you, I told you a lot about graphics card. I showed you how, what, what graphics card I picked, what performance I got out of it, which other faster models you can use. I told you everything about memory and the pitfalls, how to choose the right memory, what to consider, what my experience was. And I finally showed you in this video, the CPU. Now, should there still be for some mysterious reason, unanswered question about the Mac Pro 4.1 and 5.1, then maybe just uh, use the spot in the navigation and leave it under the corresponding video. If it's something about graphics card, post it below in the graphics card section, or if it's about memory in the memory section. Um, I'm really curious what, got, what you guys think about this tutorial series. It's the first uh, lengthy tutorial series I produced. Uh, previously, I always did more like a shorter standalone things, like uh, for the iMac, for example, maybe I can show this to you here the iMac tutorial that I did, where obviously you have to be a little bit careful with the power supply. The only thing I could uh, not think about is maybe how to do a fan replacement in the Mac Pro, because I noticed my power supply fan is a little bit on the noisy side. So I actually, I, I looked at how to fix the fan on the Mac Pro, maybe replace it with a Noctua fan because they supposedly are so quiet, but it's a little bit of a tricky job because the way the cable is routed but uh, yeah guys uh, let me know in the comments below if you want to see a video of how to make your Mac Pro quieter if the Mac Pro if your Mac Pro is so loud if, if the fans are loud I mean obviously if you have a computer from 2009 the fans have run for nine years so it is understandable that they might become a little bit noisier over time and it would be for me personally it would be interesting because I like super quiet computers so obviously the Mac Pro it's a big machine so it's not super super quiet but I also don't find it very, very noisy. So um, that concludes this video. I see you as a subscriber on my channel. All the best to you, take care. And yeah, guys, now uh, stay tuned for the secret follow-up episode where I show you how to make your Mac Pro's fans much more silent or how to replace the fans with a Noctua fans. So more and more people have already subscribed to my channel because of the useful content that I produce. And if you also wanna learn how to become successful online, then I see you as a subscriber on my channel or in one of my online courses. All the best to you, take care.